Welcome to the EPRO 8 Challenge where we're going to build a burglar alarm. Now I've been taking up a new hobby. Ah, and I, I'm just a beginner, just a beginner of my paintings, but I have this, did this one last night, I did this painting last night of my wife. I think it's not too bad, eh? It's a, I think it's a good start and I, I can improve, but I can see where I'm going from. Well, but anyway, I'm a little bit worried about this art because there's been a few burglaries in our neighborhood and I'm a bit worried that someone's going to try and steal some of my artworks. So we're going to build a burglar alarm and we're going to use a pot and an aluminium rod. Block your ears, people. Now I reckon that's going to work good as a burglar alarm. So what we're going to, have to do is build a burglar alarm making that noise. Hey, now with, as with all these challenges, the idea is that you have a go at solving them first. So if you haven't solved this challenge yet, stop this video, go try and solve the challenge, then come back. If interested to see your results, you can see what we came up with. This is my solution for the burglar alarm. Basically, it's a it's a catapult type mechanism we've got here. So a couple of key things to look at. We've got an axle down the bottom here that's, um, that the big levering arm is hinged onto. We've got a, couple, a string of rubber bands that are attached from the top here round the arm to the other end. Now there's a little trick for that. What you needed to do, you can't have the rubber bands tied to the top here. What happens is when the arm fires forward and triggers out here and keeps going this way, if you've got those rubber bands tied to the top, they'll actually try and still be gripping it now. So you need that, you need that rubber band, that rubber band um, able to kind of let go as it goes past like this. So it's just hooked around the back of it. I have got this extra joiner on the end here, which is there to kind of to stop it from stop it from sliding forward when it's up here. So it got this nice, when it's pulling back like this, these rubber bands are trying to pull really hard in this direction. So that means this, these vertical arms here are trying to be pulled over. Which is why we've got this, this nice strong bracing here just to lock it in place and make it really rigid. One more trick to show you. What we found is if you get two of these blue joiners on the end there, and you put them not straight, not quite lining up, you put them on about a 45 degree angle, you can create a really cool hook with that. So that's hooked that rubber band really nicely on there so that end's not coming out. So block your ears people, we're gonna hold this at the end and we're gonna fire it so as it hits the pot. You ready? Yeah! Now that's gonna scare any burglar off. We want the burglar alarm to be able to be locked down so it's there ready to get tripped when a burglar comes along. So basically all I've added here is I've added this couple of little hooks at the end here. So when that pulls down, if we put something through the middle there, then it's not gonna fire up, but it's arms ready to fire. So that's what this piece here is for. I've got a rope tied onto the end of it with a little joint, blue joiner on the end there to stop it coming out. And then now, that bit there, the alarm's not going anywhere at the moment. Until someone comes along, pulls on the rope, which is gonna pull on this um, arm here, which is gonna trigger this and block your ears. For the next part of the challenge, we're gonna go on a field trip. We're gonna leave, leave the ePro8 studio and we're gonna rig this thing up in my living room. And I've got a cunning plan. I'm gonna set it up so that this turns into a burglar alarm that trips whenever anyone tries to break into my house. Welcome to my living room, where you'll see I've just put the painting that I did last night up on the wall. I'm pretty proud of that. I think it looks pretty good. So hopefully no one steals it. And I'm gonna show you the rig we've got. So, on the floor here, we have our burglar alarm set up. We've got our locking rod here, which is connected from here over to our handle on our window. It's one trick we've found for this. When you pull the locking rod, it tends to want to pull the whole structure with it. So I've tied a piece of rope here to a bit of furniture over there so the whole thing can't move. And then that's all locked and ready to go. So that's armed when anyone opens the window the alarm will sound. <laughs> so check out my living room. What do you reckon of this? We've got our alarm system down the bottom with the pot. We've got a rope going from there, round the, round the window, up to the curtain rail, down to the couch, around another window, up to the door, around the television, around the door. It's just chaos, and there's no burglar getting in here. Just one thing I want to show you before we do a demo, 
is the the uh, when you're mounting these things here, all you do is just add a put a bit of a bit of string, string tight to the end of the pulley, and then you can tighten any piece of furniture or anything like that you want. Right, let's just check this thing out before we get our burglar coming into town. So just pull on the rope there. Oh yeah, that's so gonna get the red burglars out of the way. So now I've got my alarm system here, rigged up with a rope that goes up to my painting that I did last night. Bit of a problem with the system at the moment though. If I take the painting off the wall, the rope doesn't get pulled, it gets loose instead. Need a problem? Have a problem? Need a solution. So, you would have seen from our previous challenge that pulleys are really good at changing the direction of motion in a rope. What we've done here is we've run a rope up to this pulley here, so now when you pull on the picture at all, or move the picture at all, it's going to pull down, this one's going to pull up, and the pulley at the bottom here, there's another pulley at the bottom here, that's going to pull sideways. So the direction is going from up to down to sideways, and that is going to trigger our alarm. So now if our burglar comes along, Let's pimp this burglar alarm, eh? With a laser beam that's going to bounce all around the room so that if the burglar trips the laser beam, the alarm sounds. So we want the laser beam to be on all the time, so grab a laser beam and we'll use a switch to turn it on. we we'll use a battery to power it, power it up. So remember the rules with the electronics, always match colours and anything with red or black on it, you wire back to the battery. So just wind that up now. And we'll flip the switch and there's our laser beam. So what we're going to do is get a bunch of these mirrors that are going to bounce the laser all around the room. Lots of different angles, high and low. Some down on the floor so the burglar can't get under them. Point some a bit higher. Just all around the room, bounce lasers all over zigzag, lots and lots of places. That's looking good. Run right up real high and we'll bounce it down the side there. Right, so now because we're wanting an alarm to sound when the laser beam gets broken, we're going to use a laser receiver. So that sets as the other end. So you've got a laser transmitter and a laser receiver. So you know the story, red and blacks go back to the battery, so we'll just wire that up now. Like so. Now instead of making it using a pot to make the sound, we're going to use a we're going to use a buzzer instead. So wire that on. go. So now when the burglar breaks the alarm, <laughs> that's going to scare your burglar away, isn't it? Look at that. Sweet. Now really you don't want your alarm to just sound while the burglar is in the room. You want it to stick to keep going. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the on-off box for that. So we'll just move the buzzer up and we'll put the on-off box here instead. So what that does is that when the signal to that turns on, it stays on until something else turns it off. Wire our reds and blacks back to the battery. Now we're going to want a button to turn it off. So you might hide that button under a desk or somewhere where the burglar can't see it. So we'll clean that one up. And we'll wire that up to our buzzer. So now burglar breaks the alarm. Burglar runs away. But the alarm keeps sounding. Look at that. So you're going to want to, if we, if we push the button, that'll turn the siren off. So let's, let's password protect the save, the secret code that only we know. So we're going to use four buttons this time. We're going to have the first button, the second button, and the fourth button, but not the third button, must be pressed to turn the alarm off. So what we're going to use for that is use this AND box. So AND just means that you need all of the signals there for it to, for it to drive the output. So you need... Button 1 needs to be there, button 2 needs to be there, button 4 needs to be there, needs to be there, 
but we want to make sure they have not pressed button 3. So that, for that we use this not box. So let's connect that up. And connect our red and black wires back to the battery. Like so. And then we just connect the output from the AND box to be the thing that's going to turn the that's going to turn the uh, siren off. So Virgo comes along, trips the alarm, makes the sound. Oh, block those ears! Virgo disappears. The alarm's staying on regardless. Let's try and press all the buttons to see if that'll turn the alarm off. That doesn't turn it off. Ah, we've got to press the first one, the second one, not the third one, and the fourth one. There you go. So that was a really fun one. Hopefully you enjoyed getting to make a bit of sound. Hopefully you gave your teacher a headache in the process as well, so good work. And again, hopefully we'll see you when we come to your town to run events later in the year. Thanks for watching.